The Claiming of Grimmel Place by Big Scroll One. Chapter Six All the Perfect Combinations, Part One. Harry dragged himself out of bed, grabbing his glasses and blinking blearily. Late into the night, he heard Draco shuffling around in his room across the hall, as if he couldn't sleep either until silence finally fell. Harry had lain in bed, willing himself not to get up and go after him, to respect Draco's wishes and give him some space. He pulled out some training scrolls and stared sightlessly at them for a while until the sky began to grow pink and then fell into an uneasy sleep until his wand had vibrated his alarm. He hesitated for a moment, looking at his door before stumbling to the loo. The door wouldn't open. Harry rattled the doorknob, then again in disbelief, and again in swiftly rising fury. You are my bloody house! He hissed under his breath. The light stemmed momentarily around him, flickering in their sconces as if trying to tell him something. Harry growled. Open the fucking door! The knob turned. Glowering, Harry gave a nod, then quickly took care of business. Feeling marginally more awake, he headed out, casting a doubtful glance in the direction of Draco's door before padding downstairs barefoot. He levitated Frank outside, then went to the kitchen and accepted a coffee creature had already brewed for him, sitting impatiently at the kitchen table, one leg crossed over the other so he could jiggle his foot while he waited to hear Draco come down the stair. One cup of coffee became two, then three. Harry stared at the archway with its restored oak moulding and consternation, equal parts dismayed and irritated over the whole mess. Maybe it was selfish and thoughtless of him, but that didn't mean he wasn't right to want to ensure that Drake got opportunities he should have, Harry thought, wincing as he burned his tongue on a too quick swallow. And maybe he should have talked to Draco about it first, too. But he'd known Draco would just refuse his help again, so there would have been no point. Especially if McGonagall hadn't been amenable to the idea. It really hadn't been about the thrill of the save. Only... Harry sighed and scrubbed a hand over his face. Draco's reactions the previous night forced him to examine his own expectation of what Draco's reaction should have been. Harry had been expecting pleasure, relief. But under that, he'd, well, he'd known, hadn't he, that Draco would be displeased. Because despite what Draco had accused him of, Harry did listen. He just no longer cared if it meant he could keep Draco by his side. Pulling his wand and shaking his head, Harry cast a Patronus. The stag looked at him with extreme patience, and Harry told him, Go to Draco's room. He's going to be late for work. The stag lowered its head and galloped from the kitchen in a display of ghostly glowing blue. He returned after a moment to stare at him unblinkingly. He's not in his room. Harry sat up a little straighter. Well, go through the house and find him. He addressed Draco directly through it. You have work. I won't make you talk to me if you don't want, but you're going to be late. When it returned a few minutes later, Sir Corporal, still patient, Harry's heart began to pound. Creature! Creature appeared with a crack. He was wringing his hands. Harry noticed with a sense of overwhelming trepidation. It is. He licked his lips, his throat having on suddenly dry. It is Draco here? No. Master Draco is having left early this morning. Creature blurted out low and croaky, looking relieved at finally being able to say it. He is taking care of many of his things. Harry swore, standing. He took the stairs two at a time, not bothering to knock before shoving Draco's door open, going dizzy with shock and a raw pain that scraped against his inside as he stared in, only to see the bed stripped of its sheets. Draco's wardrobe stood empty as well, one door dangling up dejectedly. His dresser was missing Draco's random scattering of items. Gallian purse, a framed photograph of his parents, his mother of pearl-handled comb, inlaid with charms for smooth hair. 
Harry went over to the dressing room, flicking his wand to turn on the overhead lamp. Oh, he breathed, swamped with relief when he saw Draco's trunk still stacked neatly and tucked into their places. Then he narrowed his eyes and started counting. Two trunks were missing. On shaking legs, Harry went back over to Draco's bed. His stomach roiled as though he'd swallowed pork. He was trying to gnaw his way back out. He tried to tell himself that Draco had left most of the manor, left Frank, and so of course he'd come back, but... He, he loves me. He sat into the empty stillness, not jittering painfully against his ribcage. Harry put her hand flat over to still it. It was true. Draco had even obliquely admitted it last night. He loved Harry. And he still left. Harry held his wand aloft and tried to cast his Petronas. On the fourth attempt, it materialized. Tell. He swallowed. Find Draco and tell him I'm sorry. I ask him to come back. Several minutes later, he felt the cooling of his wand that indicated a charm had accomplished his task and faded. He waited for a reply. Draco's scent. Spicy and masculine, still lingering in the air. Bowing under the force of his pain when no response was forthcoming, Harry cast his patronus again and sent it to Hogwarts, letting McGonagall know he wouldn't be able to come in for the day. He got up, balancing himself with one hand on the bedpost before heading back out to the hallway. It shuddered around him. The windows rattling and the walls seeming to flex inward then back out. Harry brandished his wand and looked around. He still. Creature! He called again. Creature apparated to his side anxiously. Master Harry! He said wonderingly, as though Harry should be happy, gaze following Harry's. Grimmauld Place is giving Master the key. Yes. Harry stared at it, glowing gold and bright in the faded keyhole. It was old-fashioned, a slender rod with a swirling flat disc at the end. One tryst, and Grimmauld Place, finally ready, would really belong to him. Why? Master is feeling all of the feelings of joy and loss and in-betweens. Creature croaked reverently, watching Harry. Master has given his heart over to Grimo Place and has claimed it, and has let it see his pain. His magic has travelled from the attic to the basement and touched the fibres of its foundation. He paused. Then, regretfully, Creature is wanting to explain, but Creature belongs to Master and to Grandma Place. Creature is not being able to disobey one master in favor of the other until one is both. That's okay, Creature. Harry said, still looking at the key. The door. He felt like the pull of a magnet, like the deep urge of Archie summoning him forth. The house wanted to be claimed. Draco had said so. Is Master going to be opening it? Creature said, sounding as happy as he ever sounded, despite his nine sagging features and door disposition. Harry stared at it for another minute, his fingers itched to touch the key. No, he said, and headed to get dressed. Deliver to our box 144. Draco, please talk to me. Where are you? I went by Selfridge and they said you'd quit. Frank, uh, no, Francis misses you, and you left most of the manor. Does that mean you're coming back? Harry. Draco, I'm really sorry. I didn't know. I ignored what you said because I wanted to. You're right, I thought I could th fix things for you. But I should have respected you and told you how much I wanted you to stay. I'm okay with visiting you in Russia, even though McGonagall says those instructors are scams. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm okay with visiting you in Russia. I'll visit you wherever you go, just... right back. Harry. 
Draco. I'm here if you want to talk. I wasn't lying when I said I love you. Harry. Deliver to Albox 2A37. Return post. Albox 144 has been closed. He is either blocking our Patronuses or is too far for them to reach him. Lay said. You really cocked up this time, Potter. Guess it was your turn. I know, Harry said irritably, ready to kill his own flu into caving in over Blaze's long form standing inside. The walls rumbled slightly, responding to Harry's unspoken desire for destruction, and Harry shook his head hastily to remind the house not to take action. Blaze looked around curiously, eyes dark and wary. Our troubles, he smirked. Not as much, Harry said, glaring at him. Oh, and you're leaving? Yeah, but I'll be back to remind you what an utter bastard you are tomorrow. Blaze sat with a flippancy that in no way hid the underlying anger in his tone. Harry thought about getting into another argument. He wanted to lash out, but held his tongue when Greg patted him gently on the shoulder as Blaze disappeared in an extravagant puff of green. Don't listen to him, Harry. Draco didn't talk to Blaze for almost a year after. He cut himself off, guilt flashing in his eyes. After what? Harry asked sharply. Greg gusted out and large sigh and sat down. After Blaze offered to help him, all of us really. His family wasn't involved in the war at all, so his vaults weren't affected like ours were, and he tried to give Draco gold. They had a massive row about it. Harry suddenly sacked, sitting down next to Greg. His bloody pride. It's why he won't let you take him out, you know. Head coming up, Harry looked at him, brown knitting. I thought he was protecting me or something. No. Greg smiled faintly. He's not that nice a person. He just doesn't want people thinking that you're pulling strings for him. That any of his success is because of you. His father... Well, that's what his father did, you know. It made Draco think that's what he had to do to succeed. But work's pretty hard now. And then I go and put bloody strings for him. Harry sat with a groan, closing his eyes. God damn it! Well, you are nice, Greg said. You've got more practice at it. It's been five days, Harry said miserably. The couch moulded around him comfortingly, and Harry let himself sink into it, pressing his bare feet into the slowly warming hardwood under them. Lights flickered, lowering a touch in a bed. Harry was sure to encourage him to sleep, something he hadn't done properly in days. He'll be back soon, I'm sure. Greg stood, patting his pocket, then pulled something out. Here, it's... He frowned a little, holding it out. It's something Draco made in six year so we could all know if everyone else was all right. That was his. A necklace. Harry looked at it carefully. The chain was long, the fine gold gilt on it flaking away to reveal an aged silvery metal underneath. But dangling from it was a pendant with a dark green stone that admitted a hypnotic light from deep within when Harry stared at it closely. The glow would be gone if he was, well, you know, hurt maybe, or worse. So he's fine. It went red once in sixth year and a bunch of times in seventh, but it never went out. And right now, it's good. Greg explained. He stood there awkwardly, letting Harry inspect the piece in silence. You can keep it. I. Thanks. Harry said softly, turning it over in his hands. It felt cool but seemed to vibrate in response to his touch. Okay, I'll talk to Blake. You'll need to work it out with. Greg said. Is that possible? Harry asked. Greg's laugh was soft and shy, like he was still unused to making the sound. Swooped down to give Frank's head a gentle pat, then ducked into the flue with a small wave. Harry nodded his goodbye, then relaxed deep into the sofa when the fire fled to life looked in the pond on his hand, glowing with the pulse of life. Rachel? Harry said suddenly. 
Creature appeared with a loud crack, already wringing his hand. Harry sighed, wondering how intolerable he'd been the last few days. So sorry, I, I just... Is there a way that elf magic can locate Draco? Creature looked down at his toes, loosening his hands to twist them in his towel. Not if Master Draco is knowing that Creature is trying to find him. He creaked out. Not if he's not wanting to be found like that. I thought elves could. Harry waved a hand, unsure of how to finish the sentence. Master Harry should be letting Grimmer Place comfort him. He should open the lock, Creature said of a sudden, as earnest as Harry had ever seen him. Grimmer Place has been waiting for Master Harry to want it. Want it? Harry asked. What do you think this has all been about? Creature's mouth worked. He looked confused and tired. All I agreed us to be saying is that Grimmel Blaze will make Master Harry happy, if he lets it. I want Draco back, Harry said flatly. Can he get that for me? Maybe. Creature said, sounding uncertain. His eyes said away. It always has done what it can to unify with the wizard it wants to love. Harry reached out and patted Creature on the shoulder, probably tired, himself. It's okay, he said warily. I don't expect. Harry gave him a faint smile. Magic. Blinking, Creature gave a short bow and disapparated. Harry clutched the locket in his fist and looked at the beautiful home around him that suddenly no longer felt like one. To be continued. Thank you for listening to this part of The Claiming of Grimmel Place by Big Girl One. If you would like to stay up to date on upcoming chapters and stories, you can follow me on YouTube, Spotify, or AO3.